Look at it. It's beautiful. You guys have asked more than uh, once that to, for somebody to change this vase into a fan, and somebody did it. Somebody took the time out of their day, put in the uh, put in the effort, and we got ourselves we got ourselves a vase that fits on a fan. Now I don't know how wobbly it'll be, but it should work. Ooh, it's so wobbly. It kind of is it? I mean, it's, I feel air. It's moving stuff. Got to tweak it to get it as straight as possible. But hey, there you go. It's a base fan. Thank you to Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people. Whether you're looking to fend off boredom, focus on self-care through creativity, or join a similarly creative community, Skillshare is a place to keep you learning. Now, normally the stuff that I watch on Skillshare revolves around how can I improve my YouTube channel. And this time it's no different. One of the newest classes offered on Skillshare is one put together by Marquez Brownlee called YouTube Success Script Shoot and Edit with MKBHD. In this class, Marquez walks you through his process of how he goes about creating his YouTube videos. So if YouTube is something that you're thinking about getting into, or maybe you already have a channel and you're looking for ways that you can improve it, YouTube Success with MKBHD will be a great place to start. And for the first 1,000 people to use the link in the description below, you'll get a free trial of Skillshare Premium and after that, it's only around $10 a month. Thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Oh, hey, it's uh, season two, episode 14 of the Fan Showdown. It's basically like a weekly special at this point, it's a weekly show. We'll keep her going as long as we can. Just like this little vase fan, just keeps it all moving around the table. Now in this series, you guys out there send me what you guys, what you guys think um, a be the best cooling fan looks like or just the funniest. And you send it to me and I print it out and I give it a go. Just like, just like this. Now, if you want to get involved in the fan showdown, make sure to get subscribed to the channel, head over to my Thingiverse account to look up, you know, the critical dimensions you need to make sure you maintain in order for it to fit on this fan frame. And then send me at least an STL file to the fan showdown at gmail.com. All right, back to business. Let's talk about this little vase fan. This is the vase fan and it was created by Sim. And like you, Sim wanted to see the vase turn into a fan, so, you know, he just went ahead and did it. Now I can say with 100% certainty that this does look like a vase. Now, like I said, will it act as a fan? Not convinced, but uh, it'll be fun to try. And I guess even if it does move air at all, which we'll be able to tell in the smoke test or the fog test, whatever, whatever you want to call it, um, I'm not really sure if it's gonna move the air past the CPU cooler to keep it cool. But, you know, you never know till you try. Now this fan's a bit of a question mark, but there's another one that is also a bit of a question mark, and that's this guy. This is the Starship and it was created by Casper, and the inspiration behind this fan, well, is SpaceX's Starship. What he's done is taken the back fins of the Starship, scaled them down, and then fit four of them around the hub of this fan. But what really intrigues me the most about this fan is its, its size. It's so tiny, especially considering how big Starship is, look how small this fan is. If you put it next to like an actual fan, like the A12 X25, the whole entire fan is about the size of the hub. So again, I think it'll move some air, but I'm not convinced it's gonna do uh, much cooling, but I've been wrong before. It honestly looks like we're fixing to have a pillow fight for last place on this one, but I don't know. Now on to something, you know, a bit more standard when it comes to fans. This is the Atom and it was created by Davidin. I hope I got that pronunciation right. And this is a fan that I actually saw on the Fan Showdown Reddit page. And if you didn't know, uh, I did create a Reddit page for the Fan Showdown. You guys asked for a place to share your designs and I figured, well, Reddit's the place to be. You can go on there, you can share your designs with everybody else. And hopefully if something is that awesome or super, super unique, it'll get upvoted to the top of the page and maybe we'll you know, be able to feature it on a special. The idea is that you can share your designs with other creators and then if you have something really unique, it doesn't get like missed. We have the opportunity to make sure that everybody sees it, brings it to my attention. If it's something amazing, we can make a special out of it. Now back to the Adam. Davidin didn't give me, you know, any inspiration behind this, but I think it's safe to assume that uh, the idea of this fan was like the Adam model that you see often on, you know, signs or in textbooks or just people draw. I think we can go ahead and say, it's probably an Adam symbol. Now this last fan, probably has more brain power and thought put into it than just about any other fan that we've ever featured on the Fan Showdown. This is the noise controlled ducted airflow fan and it was created by Mux and Mux wasn't 
leaving much to chance in their design. Now, Mux said that they studied aerospace engineering, so theoretically, they should know what they're talking about. And using that experience, Mux is attempting to design a fan that performs decently while also controlling the noise output. So the big thing with this fan is not just raw performance. Yes, he wants to perform pretty well, but more importantly, he wants to do it as quietly as possible. Now, Mux did go on to list an incredible amount of information about what designs he chose, why they chose the specific designs, kind of the theory behind them. It's very interesting. It's actually really interesting to see someone who understands aerodynamics much more than myself kind of put all their information and ideas on like paper and why they designed it the way they did. And I just thought it was like enlightening. But in the end, what Mux wants is a fan that performs well and is very quiet. Now, did Mux succeed? Uh, we'll have to... We'll have to listen to find out. In the sound test, the NOCO DAF came in at 49.3 dBA. The VASE came in at 39.7 dBA. The ATOM came in at 50.9 dBA. And the Starship came in at 39.7 dBA. So in this group, the NOCO DAF did come in third uh, overall versus these fans. It did beat the Atom, which was kind of actually pretty loud. But that being said, the two fans that beat it are, well, one, this is, is this really even a fan? It's more of a base. And this is hardly a fan because it's so small. But either way, these two are quieter, but I can almost guarantee that this thing is going to push way more air than either of these two. Yes, the NOCO DAF did push way more air than these two, but that being said, did you see? <laughs> did you see the base? I mean, I'm going to be honest with you. I could feel air moving around, but it was, it was so satisfying to watch it kind of pull the air into the core of the vase and just kind of shoot it out randomly. I don't think this is going to cool all too well, even though it does move some air around just because, I mean, it doesn't really pull it in and push it out the back. It kind of just pulls it in and just flings it wherever it wants randomly. So uh, probably not going to be the best at cooling, but hilarious nonetheless. When it does come to cooling, though, the vase came in with an average temperature of 99 at a room temperature of 18.8. .8. Give us a delta of 80.2, which means 
yes, the system was thermally throttling. The Starship also came in with an average temperature of 99 at a room temperature of 20.2, giving us a delta of 78.8, but also the Starship thermally throttled as well. The Atom came in with an average temperature of 78.8 at a room temperature of 20.5, giving us a delta of 58.3. And the Nokodaf came in with an average temperature of 75.8 at a room temperature of 19.7, giving us a delta of 56.1. Placing the Nokodaf in first place, the Atom in second, the Vase and Starship, well, they're pretty much tied for last. Overall, the Nokodaf finished within the top 10, if you look at all the other fans we've ever tested, and that's not really that bad given how quiet the Mux was during the noise testing. So again, thank you all for watching this video. Thank you even more if you've submitted a fan design. And if you want to get into the action, make sure to get subscribed to the channel. Head over to my Thingiverse account to check out the critical dimensions you need to hit in order for your fan to fit on the A12X25 hub. And then send at least an STL file to thefanshowdown at gmail.com. And we'll see you probably next week, if not sooner.